Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to cover data-driven schedules for CRD. Data-driven schedules is a little bit different from dynamic schedules in that yes we're going to be delivering a unique report for each record in a database and then delivering that unique flavor of the report to a specific individual but data-driven schedules enables us to drive and customize report format, report uh, messaging, and even uh, do multiple destinations, all driven based on what's going on in a database. Also, one difference between the dynamic schedule and the data-driven schedule is that the dynamic schedule, as you know, runs an email, processes the report, then delivers that email to that specific user, and so on and so forth. In a data-driven schedule, it's going to run all of the reports that are scheduled en masse and then deliver each and every one of those reports to the specific email addresses as a next step. What this means is that the data-driven schedule is a bit faster. However, with the dynamic schedule, it's a bit slower. Now, with the dynamic schedule, it has the ability to pick up where it left off meaning that if at any point when it's processing all of these different reports it fails it can actually stop from say report number 51 and continue off on report number 52. The data driven schedule whereas if there is a failure at any point in its processes then the schedule will need to start over again from report number one in order to complete its process. Okay let's get started. Okay to start the data driven schedule go to the home tab in CRD and then go to data driven. The first thing we have to do in a data driven schedule is actually build a data driver which is a bit different from the other schedule types. What is a data driver? A data driver is the selection criteria that you decide and based on that selection criteria it's going to pull back a list of records and these records will be will determine what values we're going to run the reports for and also where we're going to be delivering the reports to. So the first thing, let's go ahead and pick our database here, CRD samples, and we'll connect to that database and then we'll pick the table that holds the desired records. Now you can either use the simple query or clicking on the advanced tab, you can write your own query. If you're using the simple query or using the advanced query, you can actually parse out any records that you don't want in that, that you want to include in your search criteria in the table. So for example, we can only look at records that are in the UK. Click parse. And these seven records here are the records that we're going to be generating reports for. Though there are 91 records in this table, the data-driven schedule is only going to run for these seven or any records that fulfill the search criteria I stipulated in my query. Based off of the information in this query, we're going to generate a unique report for each of these records here. And we're going to deliver that unique report to a specified fax, email, or SharePoint, or whatever, as it's been indicated within your table. So what's great about the data-driven schedule is that all of the information needed to distribute your report only needs to be stipulated in the database. The format of the report, the destination of the report, the email, the SharePoint, or the FTP drive, or anything like that, and also other information such as maybe some summary sales data or customer data or whatever. All that information can be listed in the table, and then we can use that information anywhere in the schedule itself. The one more thing that's great about the data-driven schedule, and especially with the, as it refers to the data driver, is the fact that as new records fulfill our selection criteria, we'll automatically generate a report for that particular record. And as other records, like around the horn here, if it no longer fulfills the selection criteria, which ours was that it needs to be in the United Kingdom, so say around the horn moves to the United States, then we'll no longer generate a report for this record based off of that search criteria. So this takes the management of your subscriptions and people's subscriptions to certain reports away from it being you managing it to rather the query and the information that the query finds manages who, it, who gets and who does not get the report. So now that we've built our data driver, we'll select our key column, 
which is customer ID for me. And then there's one more checkbox here. Group reports together by email addresses. Now, if you're sending reports by email, and diff, all those different records that we looked at, if any of those records share the same email address, rather than the recipient getting five emails with the various separate different reports um, coming in each email, they can actually check this box here, and then they'll get one email with the various flavors of the reports attached. So now in the general section, as usual, we'll select our report and give our schedule a name. Okay. Now we need to determine the schedule. As always, you can get as complex or simplistic as you want with scheduling. You can schedule a report to run every day, or you can have it run every six days, or you can have it run weekly or every five weeks on a Monday and a Tuesday. In this case, let's stick to every day. You can have this schedule enabled meaning that it will run on the scheduled time, or rather if you want it to be disabled, meaning that the schedule will be grayed like these schedules over here, um, and will not run on a scheduled basis, you would uncheck that box. All right, now is the where the fun part begins. Now we'll have to actually decide where the report is going to be going to. A bit different from the dynamic schedule, the dynamic schedule can only send to one destination at a time, whereas the data-driven schedule affectionately called uh, the dynamic schedule on steroids, has the ability to deliver to multiple destinations at the same time. So these are the list of the destinations that we have here. And for this exercise, let's first choose email. Just like an Outlook email, you would compose your email. But with a data-driven schedule, we'll do it with a twist. Um, you see this window here on our left-hand side? And notice, this is called the inserts window. It is a repository of variables that you can insert anywhere in the software. In the case of a data-driven schedule, you actually get a unique set of variables called data-driven data. If these values here seem familiar, these were the columns in the table that we were querying earlier when we set up our data driver. We can actually insert these variables into our email address to customize the email for each recipient. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to be delivering rather than to one static email address or, or a static group of static email addresses, we actually want to send this to a changing list of email addresses. So I have an email field in my table, that data driver that we set up earlier. And I'm going to drag and drop that email field into the to field here. So now what this means is we're going to actually generate a unique email for each of the uh, reports that are going out and attach that report to the corresponding email address. You can do the same by if you had a field for CCC and BCC or if you wanted to say use the same email field if you really wanted to you can simply drag and drop that there. Now we can also customize the messaging of this email as well for each user. So we have the subject line. Let's go ahead and throw in the company name here. Let's add an apostrophe yes for good grammar and a report. So now when we, when we send this email, the subject line will have the corresponding company name for each of the records in the table. The same can be done for the body of the email. So we could say, hello, contact name. Comma. Here is your report. Now, what's a really cool tip about the data-driven schedule, you can actually put in some summary data from your report um, if you wanted to based on values in your database. So say you had things like gross sales or, um, or current quarter or, or you know any type of certain values that deal with your report that you'd actually want to share in the body of the email itself. Well, you can use the data-driven data to feed those unique values for each record into your table. So in my case, I could say your customer ID is, and then I'll drag my customer ID field over here to the right, and there it is. So now for each of the unique emails 
in which the unique flavor of the record is attached, we'll actually put in the unique customer ID for each of those users. Or for you, it could be your gross sales was whatever the gross sales for that particular record was, or whatever um, fits your fancy there. If you're using an HTML email, you can actually throw in a mix of your own HTML code into the email and also throw in these inserts in there to customize a very nice looking uh, email with dynamic data from your database but also uh, has your colors, your borders, corporate logo, or what have you. You can select a format like PDF or any of the other formats as usual in the data-driven schedule, but you can also uh, customize the format as well. So if you had a column in your table uh, that would say uh, CSV, uh, Adobe or what have you so the column would be named formats and then for each record you'd have CSV, Excel 7, Excel 8 and so on and so forth we can actually drag that formats column into the format field here and the data driven schedule will automatically determine what the format of the report should be for each record further adding to the customization for this exercise we're just going to choose PDF also what we can do, we can customize the file output name as well. So rather than using the default naming convention of the report, we can actually customize it to whatever we want. So we could do something like company name, underscore, customer ID, and then we'll append a time and date stamp to it. So that way there's a unique name for each of the report that's outputted. This is actually particularly helpful if you're going to be outputting these reports to disk. So once our destination for email is set, then we can keep adding destinations if we wanted to. So say, for example, that there are users that also want the report in fax format. Then we can also send the report to fax and email at the same time. So I have fax phone number here. I have a fax field here where I hold all my fax numbers. I drag and drop that there. And then I can also customize the cover page of this fax report as well. So what we can also do using the data-driven schedule is also customize the delivery of the fax. So we're generating unique fax, faxed report for each of those records that we looked at in our data driver and then delivering a customized cover letter, um, our cover page and the report to that particular user. What's great about that data-driven schedule is that in your database, if you have a re one record that says they want it by email, whereas another record wants it by fax, you now have the flexibility to automatically decide who gets it in what format and in what destination. Moreover, if you have certain users that want both, then if it's stipulated within your table, both their fax number and their email address, then we'll deliver that report to all of those destinations. And you can keep doing that for all the different destinations that CRD has to offer. This is the stage in which we're going to feed the, per, feed the parameters that we want the report to run for into the parameter values of our crystal report. So if we go back to data-driven data, and you notice I have company's name here, and I have company name here. The column and the field in the report do not need to match, rather the values need to match. So I'm just going to simply drag and drop company name there. And all the values that meet our search criteria under company name, which was those seven records in the UK, we're going to feed those records into the parameter value here. And with that, we'll generate a unique report for each of those parameter values. Go ahead and set your report options as necessary. Database logins and table logins are determined here. We can enable snapshots, and snapshots take a picture of the report as it's produced and retain that report for a specified amount of time. We can also refresh the schedule before execution, meaning that if you make frequent changes to the report, such as the borders, the colors, what have you, we'll actually refresh that report before we run it every time, so that way we're running the latest version of the report. 
Exception handling, you make use of CRD self-healing capabilities. So if there's a failure for any amount of time, CRD will automatically retry it up to a certain number of times, up to a certain number of intervals. And if any of the reports that this, this schedule generates is blank, then we can either ignore that report because it's blank, or we can execute any number of business process automation tasks against that blank report. For example, sending an email notification to an admin or to the recipient notifying them that that report is blank. And finally, there are custom tasks, once again, which you can have run, which this is the business process automation arm of CRD, where you can run a variety of different tasks, for example, updating a database record indicating that we've generated reports for that record off the back of that off the back of this data driven schedule these tasks can be run either before the schedule runs or after the schedule runs one more option is located down here which is different from the other schedule types where we can actually gener have these tasks run once for each of the generated reports, meaning each of the unique flavors of the reports that we're outputting will run your set of tasks that you have listed here. Or we can just have it run once for the entire schedule itself. And there's my schedule there. If I right click on it, I can click on the properties to edit my schedule. I can copy, rename it, I can disable the schedule, refresh it manually, or preview the reports, and I can also execute it on demand. Well, what we've just done, we've taken a look at how to make a data-driven schedule that will reel through a table, generate a unique report for each of the values based on our selection criteria, and then delivers the unique formatted report to a recipient with customized email messaging and the destinations customized for each recipient. Thank you very much for joining.